Uh, welcome. This is an open facilities meeting. Uh, we had one before and we will likely have additional meetings. The, the purpose of this meeting is to both communicate information to the public. Uh, we have uh, lots of our talented and experienced uh, staff here. Uh, our township manager, I'm going to be turning it over to him in a minute, but I just wanted to um, explain, we're going to be providing information on our current facilities. We're going to be providing an opportunity for input from the public, for questions from the public. Um, and everyone should understand the commissioners and the township staff are taking the condition of our facilities very seriously. We have a large, complex, and unfortunately very expensive uh, prospect and issue facing us with almost all of our township facilities, as you will see shortly. We're not ruling anything out at this point. We're not ruling out um, refurbishing the buildings. We're not ruling out knocking them down and rebuilding them. And we're not ruling out uh, finding new locations for the facilities. Uh, we are also not ruling out combining facilities. That could be anything from combining libraries to combining a township administration building with a school administration building. Um, or uh, community centers. So uh, everything is uh, on the table and being considered. Um, that, with that uh, introduction, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, township manager, Bob Zienkowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just wanna welcome everyone here to this meeting. Um, just to add to what the council, what the uh, uh, board president had mentioned, um, there are no predetermined results or, you know, it's already a done deal. There's nothing that is farthest from the truth on that. Uh, I think the board and staff are, you know, are here to listen. Um, you know, what suggestions the community has, uh, what uses have had, you know, have been used there before. Uh, what do you want to see as a way of activities, uh, reutilizing, repurposing. Uh, these facilities, as the president had mentioned, um, you know, alternate plans. I think everything is open for discussion. Uh, it's an ongoing process here. Um, so uh, it's, I think this is great. I know a number of the residents I've been able to speak to uh, have been, you know, just outstanding on this. I know the concerns that are there, um, you know, we want to make sure we address all those and we hear, you know, everyone's feelings on this. Um, it's a situation that we've gotten into and unfortunately the board has, you know, they, there's no place else to push this or kick the can down, down the road any further um, and to start addressing a lot of these issues and concerns. So with that, less of me, more of Allison right now to start a presentation um, that we'd like to begin with and then uh, we'll move from there. I know that everyone's time, we wanna respect everyone's time so by starting here at seven, our hope is that around nine o'clock, we'll wrap up with some determinations of you know, future uh, meetings and uh, where we wanna to go to. So with that, Allison. All right, thank you very much. Um, welcome everyone. And thanks for taking the time out of your night to talk about what we think is a very important topic, our township facilities. I am going to take a moment just to get my screen shared. Everyone can see that. Um, and I'm gonna ask Bob as, uh, as I'm going through, if there's anything you'd like to add, just to feel free to do so. Um, okay, so the purpose of tonight's meeting is to kind of promote uh, an understanding of the current conditions in our facilities, to understand the needs of, that the facilities must fulfill for the community and establish our next steps. Um, so we believe that our residents and employees deserve safe, functional, and economic, economical buildings that will serve the mission of the township for generations to come. And we are looking to some of the planning documents that we have um, engaged with over the, the years to seek guidance for how we move forward. And that's just a kind of a looking at what we've already done, but this is just kind of a first step. We definitely have a lot more um, discussions going forward for, for this conversation. 
So one of the, the big things is looking at um, our PFM financial strategic financial management plan, which was completed in 2020. And one of the biggest goals of that plan was establishing financial security uh, for the township. And there are ways to do that, like increasing taxes or decreasing services, which really aren't desirable. But we think that by looking at creatively at these buildings, we can maybe make some operational improvements to improve how we provide services with our buildings. Um, we have also had numerous reports over the years from our property insurance company looking at these buildings and identifying safety concerns. So the township has done its best to try to remedy them along the, the years, but these are very costly improvements. Some of them uh, do uh, involve making big changes to those buildings that are, are costly. Um, one of the other things that has been important um, is the township has made a substantial commitment to sustainability um, and going so far as to implement a ready for 100 resolution in 2019, which is committing to trying to transition the township to 100% clean renewable electricity use by 2030 in all of its buildings. Um, the township sustainability plan, which is one of the first plans adopted within Montgomery County, uh, promotes energy efficiency and healthy lifestyles. And then finally, we are currently working on updating our 2022 comprehensive plan for the township which uh, reviews how our land use decisions, um, the types of land use decisions that we need to make for the township to realize a vision over the next 10 to 20 years. So we wanna kind of look at all of our facilities holistically throughout, throughout this. So just real quick, we've done a, um, before I go any further, we have done a number of presentations. So some of these slides maybe uh, you may see again. Um, and if you're looking for more information on some of the work that we've done in the past or to see this presentation, uh, either the PowerPoint and or the video, we will post it on our website, uh, which is there's a hot topics link and there's a facilities management link under that that you can find all this information. So um, the, the facility statistics, we have a lot of buildings and their average age is fairly old. So we have 14 buildings or facilities, we'll say, on 10 different sites uh, and two pools. The average age of our buildings is 117 years old. Um, that includes some of our extremely old buildings, such as the Wall House at 339 years, which is amazing. Um, our Lamont Community Center at 142 years old, Shovel Shop 200, almost 250 years old. Um, but so if you look at the buildings, the average age of the buildings that we actively use for conducting business, that's 86. And that's, that's pretty old for a building. Um, some of our newer buildings, the libraries are nearing the half century mark. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that, that adds up. Um, there's a lot of aging infrastructure that, that over time um, de deteriorates and needs a lot of work to maintain them. And these are not small buildings like, like your home. These are fairly large buildings with a lot of systems in place. So overall, as I mentioned, um, the buildings are deteriorating just simply because of age. Um, they really haven't had a lot of major renovations or updates over time. Um, and talking to architects a lot of, and building industry experts, a lot of them say that major renovations should be occurring in your buildings for the long term over a 20 to 25 year cycle. And we haven't really done that with our buildings. We've been kind of, we've doing our maintenance and repairs um, but we haven't really done some, some holistic, a lot of holistic maintenance and repairs. We've been kind of putting Band-Aid repairs in to keep our costs low for maintaining these buildings. Um, many of the buildings really aren't purpose-built. Um, we've been retrofitting them to our, our uses, but again, not doing major renovations to make sure that they can continue to serve the township for the long term. And then there's kind of a right sizing some of these buildings. Some of them are a little too large, some of them are a little too small or a lot too large or a lot too small. So um, we have wasted space in some of these buildings. We're paying to heat or cool buildings that are too large, or we have facilities that we're kind of just busting out of and we could, we could really use, use some more new space. And then finally, our buildings really are, are, are not meeting our modern needs. And I think as time goes on, we're gonna find again that they're, they're, that'll still continue to be a problem. So, you know, we're, we're here today um, to talk about this because if this is a big issue, 
Because if this is just one isolated facility and all of the listed facilities, it would be a much easier problem to address. But this is a systemic issue. It's 16 facilities across the township. So what that, that says to me a little bit is 16 facilities might be too much for the township to manage. So trying to figure out what is, what is the best mix. And, and that's, a, that's an important conversation for us to have going along the way. So our PFM strategic financial management plan said that, um, again, many of these, these facilities are old and need of repair. And we've done our best to try to keep them going as, as, as best as we can. But it says over the next decade, decade, the township must develop and execute a master plan to provide updated facilities for all of its core services. So what are the core services? Really, they are the, the administration, police, public works, and emergency medical services. So we're going to kind of address those as our, our like first priority. And then we have our second tier facilities, which are those that, that provide your community services, the libraries, the community centers, the art center, the pools. And then we have our third tier facilities, which are historic and or community um, facilities, but they're not the main community services. So we have Curtis Hall, Glenside Hall, Wall House, the Shovel Shop. So we'll just start with these third tier facilities. They're definitely our oldest buildings. As I said, the Wall House is almost 340 years old. Um, they're extremely high maintenance. Um, the township does its best to maintain them, um, but they require more consistent and costly maintenance than some of our more modern buildings. And there's constant painting that's required. There's mechanicals that they're updated. And some of the things that we found as we're maintaining these buildings is they, they look like they're old and sturdy and they, they've lasted a long time. But when you get into the guts of these buildings, there's a lot of repair that needs to happen and a lot of structural issues that we need to, to take on that cost more than your average modern building. So when we look at our core service facilities, like I said, the, the administration, public works, police buildings, um, we have a lot of mechanical equipment failures. Um, we have structural health and safety concerns. Um, I don't, if you all recall, we had a couple of weeks ago, we had to close down our administration building due to air quality concerns. Uh, we have accessibility issues. Our, many of our buildings are multi-story, but they do not have elevators. Uh, ADA accessibility is a concern. Um, some of the things that we've, we figured, you know, over the last few years, um, you know, just trying to keep the building accessible during the pandemic has been, has been very difficult. So we've had to, you know, do some things to, to, to um, reorganize how the buildings go, but still they are not, we've had to keep the building closed a lot more than other municipalities had just by the way that they're set up to keep everyone safe. Uh, we have, again, the inability to separate the public from township functions. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, people walking through our board meeting rooms while if, if the, if for accessibility or deliveries during meetings to get to the building because of the, the, the ramps. Uh, again, the, because of the, some of our buildings are too small or too big, we, we are not efficiently using our space. Uh, the administrative campus and even public works, um, site circulation, parking, uh, being able to access the sites themselves is very difficult. Um, they do not have enough, an appropriate space for storage of files and equipment. Um, we currently are storing, at least in the administration building, our files are being stored um, in our attic eaves, in our basement, offsite in Roland Community Center. And a lot of these files are, are damaged beyond repair. They are water damaged, they're full of mold. Uh, so that's definitely something to consider because of climate control and just building, building issues. And then finally, uh, inappropriate IT setup. Um, just, just the way some of these buildings are, are constructed, it's very difficult to, to get your IT set up in these buildings. Just looking at our public works facility, um, Public safety is a concern during yard hours. Um, when the yard is open, we have uh, people coming into the building uh, from the lower level, um, driving in while equipment is, is moving around. And sometimes people, you know, we, fortunately we haven't had any issues, but if, if, if you can't see people in your large equipment, that could be a problem. Uh, site ingress and egress off Church Road is very difficult due to the proximity to the intersection with uh, Old York Road. Um, 
we have uh, the stairwell walls to the front of the building are crumbling uh, and pavement is uneven as well. Um, in fact, just recently, some, one of the, the walls holding up the, the stairs did collapse. So uh, that is closed off to the public. Uh, we have the salt shed, uh, which is severely corroding and in danger of collapse. So we've had to shut that down. Uh, so our salt is no longer covered. We have tarps over it, which really isn't a good business practice. Um, and like most of our buildings are HVAC systems and plumbing are outdated and leaking and causing issues. So here's, here's a picture, some pictures of the wall that uh, recently collapsed at the front of the building. And then the top right corner is some of the evidence of the corrosion on the salt shed at the facility. The township administration, EMS and police buildings, um, we have poor user experiences. Um, you know, I said there's too many locations to choose from when you come into the site. Um, if you go into the parking lot, there's four different buildings and most people will say, come into the tax office and say, I need to see the police or go into the admin building and say, how do I pay my taxes? So that, that gets to be frustrating for residents. Um, facilities are cluttered and dingy and tired. Uh, if you walk into the main entrance of the administration building, it's beautiful. Um, but as you get further and further into the building, um, it becomes more and more tired. Uh, and again, I mentioned ADA standards, poor ingress and egress. And our parking lot is very crowded. We have limited space uh, and it's not well circulate, um, doesn't circulate very well or have good lighting. Looking at our, um, our buildings, we have an EMS garage, uh, which was condemned before EMS uh, moved in uh, decades ago. Um, but as far as I understand, the um, nothing was repaired. EMS was just permitted to move in. But we found recently that the support structure underneath the, the garage where the ambulance is parked is compromised and we must park the ambulance outside um, which it causes issues with uh, medications that are left in the ambulance. So they need to be taken back and forth um, to make sure that the temperature is appropriately regulated on, on all the medications left in the, uh, required for the ambulance. Um, in addition, due to the size of the garage in um, EMS building, uh, the ambulances need to be special ordered, which adds cost to each and every one of the ambulances that we've ordered over the years. Um, to make them shorter to fit within the garages. Um, and, oops, sorry. Uh, again, HVAC systems failing. We have asbestos in the buildings. Um, we have roof, roof and basement leaks. And uh, the police, excuse me, have outgrown their facility. Um, one of the things they really do need is a sally port for transitioning uh, prisoners between their cars and, and the, the cells. Uh, here's just some pictures of the basement in the EMS and some of the other conditions. Um, the bottom right hand corner shows the support beam, as you can see, is extremely corroded and actually have beams uh, plural. Um, that is not safe for, for the ambulance to be parked above or on top. Um, this is some pictures from the basement where the township stores its files, as you can see, some of the files in the corner. Um, have been water damaged and, and probably not salvageable. And we have many more boxes like that. And again, some of the situation with the wires and the clutter in the basement, which cause a, a hazard. Um, in the bottom uh, right corner of this picture shows uh, some of the wood columns on uh, the Township Administration building. Again, this is a significant cost to the township every, every few years that all the wood uh, on these older buildings needs to be scraped and painted and patched, um, adding cost. Um, I, I know the, the roofs are probably in need of replacement too as we've had multiple leaks. So it's an additional cost on these buildings. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to our community centers. Um, we, we'll, we'll stay away from the libraries for the moment. Um, both of our community centers and the art center are over 100 years old. Um, they've never really been had any major renovations to bring them to modern standards or meet functional requirements. 
Um, things have, have changed since, since the townships moved into those facilities. Uh, so they aren't able to meet some of the more modern requirements for recreation centers. Um, they, they all have structural and mechanical concerns, air quality concerns, and safety concerns as well. To the Roland Community Center. Uh, Roland Community Center has, has mentioned that it was shut down for, for the winter season. Um, it has two very large boilers that were uh, part of the original building that were decertified approximately 10 years ago um, due to age and inability to function. Um, there was a new boiler that was installed um, shortly around that time and it did not last through to the warranty period uh, due to the fact that it was installed. It was a high efficient, efficiency boiler, which was great, but the, the rest of the piping system for the boiler was not upgraded. So the boiler um, was working extra hard and it just wore itself out. So yes, we can replace a boiler, but it, it's only gonna last 10 years or less due to this problem. So uh, that's why there is a, a huge expense to upgrade uh, the boiler for this facility to make sure that whatever boiler is put in would be, you know, cost effective for the township for the long term. Uh, the original boilers we've been, and the last year that this building uh, functioned for the winter, we were going back and forth between the new boiler and the original one of the two original boilers. Um, but they they are finally that last one is finally uh, kicking up, you know, kicked it. So, uh, but they are, they are insulated with asbestos and sections of the asbestos is exposed. Um, and the, there's these large buildings, uh, they do have structural integrity issues. Um, some of the, the rooms that, that have been in use have significant mold and water damage. Um, and we, I know crews have gone in there to repair them and the mold just keeps coming back. Uh, and then the AC, the AC unit is rusting and uh, the roof is, is aging and, and leaking. There's some photos of the boiler room showing some of the conditions there. I think the uh, top right hand corner shows the new boiler, high efficiency boiler, and the bottom uh, right or yeah, bottom right corner shows the, the large boilers. Um, the, the one in the foreground is the one that would had has been decommissioned for a long time. The one in the middle is the one that was that was functioning um, on and off of the new boiler. Um, the the top pictures up here show the Girl Scout room and the basement of um, Girl Scout room. Uh, there is significant mold on the exterior wall. There were leaks. Um, there are grading issues that were were tried to fix, but again, the um, the mold keeps coming back. Uh, again, the, the, the roof and the air conditioning unit. Um, here's some more pictures of some conditions within Roland Community Center showing kind of aftermath of some of the, the roof leaks. Now this is, this is the third floor, which uh, the community does not use, but it does, um, does the mold and the leaks do go down to the floors that are occupied. Uh, the, the bottom, uh, right hand corner here shows that uh, some of the files that are stored by the township in this building that have been damaged. Um, here's some some damage in the library. Uh, the Lamont Community Center. Um, some of the things that we found in that building is there are um, uneven floors on both the, the second, the main floor and the basement floor that do cause tripping hazards. Uh, the walls are, are eroding, and especially in the basement, there is some asbestos and mold issues. Um, the, the gym in this building is, is, is extremely small. Um, it doesn't have out of bounds areas, so it's basically the size of the court. Um, there's no room um, for anyone to spectate during, during the game or play. Uh, and the ceiling is extremely low, so if someone is trying to make a basket, uh, I am not tall enough to have this be a problem, but I'm sure other people are more athletic than me. Um, they, their balls would be bouncing off uh, the ceiling as they're trying to make baskets. And um, the, this court is um, 
only open, I believe, at night during the summer because there's no air conditioning. So it cannot be used during the day um, for, for play during, for children when they're off school. Uh, again, this is another building that was closed during the summer due to border uh, concerns. Um, and, and it does need to be uh, replaced. Um, we've had concerns with electrical, uh, which is a, another reason, to, part of the reason why this, this boiler hasn't been uh, replaced um, and making connections and upgrades there. Uh, here's some, some pictures of some of the conditions in the green room at Lamont. This is some conditions showing conditions of the floor and some of the other water damage issues. Um, the basketball court, uh, the, the railing uh, on the exterior is constantly being damaged. This uh, picture on the bottom right shows the pipe has been removed, has been kicked out. And this is, this is a constant problem. This is uh, just one evidence and, and the, the spindles on on this railing are often kicked out um, and they're very sharp. So um, they also, the, the, it's a design issue. Um, so we're, the staff is always pushing the, the spindles back in. Uh, again, some, some more pictures from the boiler room. Glenside Hall, um, this is a facility that, that doesn't get a lot of use by the township, but it's kind of a, a secondary uh, community facility. Um, the handicap ramp on this uh, facility needs to be replaced. Um, it is starting to, to crack and split and separate from the building. Um, the front stairs, which are extremely steep, um, are also having some issues. They, they still look sturdy at this point, but there are gaps. Um, in between the risers that you can see through and there's, there is not any fill behind those stairs. Um, all the exterior wood surfaces need to repla be replaced. Uh, the roof needs to be replaced. Um, and uh, there is oops, sorry, significant flooding and, and uh, from water, water damage from flooding into the basement. Uh, the basement floor, um, when this facility was used as a rental, um, is often used as a place for cocktail hour and stuff like that. And that floor um, is, is rolling um, and is a, a tripping hazard as well. Um, we, when we worked to do our public-private partnership with Curtis Arboretum, we reached out to a number of catering companies and it was very difficult to, none of the companies were, were willing to take it on as it is a much more, a much bigger challenge um, because it's very difficult to rent um, due to the, the, the land surrounding it uh, and limitations on parking and configuration of the building. Uh, here's just some samples showing the stairs, uh, the paint that needs to be done and, and the, the separation for the handicap there. Then some water damage um, the, that it has been getting worse over time. Here's the, the basement floor. We've uh, had to rip up the carpeting because it was because of the recent uh, flood damage. And some more water damage issues. Um, Glenside Elkins Park Libraries, I, I won't comment uh, on functional, functionality of um, these facilities, that, that would be for the library uh, to do, uh, but uh, they are buildings that uh, are owned by the township, so we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, they are the township's newest facilities at uh, roughly about a half century old. Um, we've had some, some issues and concerns with the boiler. Um, yeah, there is an incomplete combustion from the, the furnace. We've had soot stains in the Glenside Library. Um, there's some, some issues with structural issues with the wall and the stairwell. Uh, the Elkins Park Library uh, roof will need to be replaced as it has been leaking. And there is mold evident in the buildings as well. Uh, here's some, some samples uh, from, from one of the buildings some of this soot from, from the, the boiler. 
the art center, uh, one of our older buildings, um, has has some issues as well. Um, the art center uh, center for arts is um, responsible for this building, but it's also a very costly building. Um, their their building layout is is not conducive for safety. Uh, there's a fire escape that from the second floor is rusted out and not functional. Uh, there are loose stones in the, and on the entrance ramp. There's cracking walls and peeling paints, uh, damages to the, world, the uh, window frames. Um, on the basement, which is heavily used for um, classes, there's pipes on the floor, which cause tripping hazards. Um, and uh, several of the classrooms in the basement uh, experience flooding uh, periodically in large storms. And uh, there, there is also an issue with mold in the walls. Um, so it's definitely a challenge for the art center because, uh, to, to manage. And here's some samples of some of the things going on at the art center. So um, our buildings really do provide us with a, a lot of great services, um, but uh, what they they also I think cause you know hinder us from um, being the community that I think we need to, to we should be compared to other communities. Um, so what what are other communities doing? Well, most have recently upgraded or considering upgrading their municipal facilities. A lot have undergone. Uh, a number of projects to build new facilities or expand existing facilities. Uh, many have one library. There are a few or two and many with no libraries. Uh, they share with other communities. Um, there are community centers and pools are also fairly rare. It's been a trend for some of the larger communities to build community centers, um, but, but many, not many in the county have community centers. Um, and pools are also, um, they're a little more prevalent, but they're, they're a little, they're rare too. Uh, and most of the pools are newer or in the process of being upgraded. And most communities operate out of a consolidated campus or with uh, definitely less than 10 properties and 14 buildings. Um, here's just some samples of other facilities, community center facilities. Um, in the county, uh, offering more modern, uh, modern facilities that are more spacious and clean and airy. Um, so, yeah. while nothing is written in stone, um, we think this is a really great opportunity to take a look at our facilities uh, and see see what opportunities are out there. Uh, we can see how we can increase our operating efficiency meet our energy efficiency and sustainability goals, expand programming and services to the community, and increase our community cohesiveness. Uh, so, so our next steps uh, would be to continue to gather community input, uh, hold facility open houses. I, I mean, we can show you as many pictures as we'd like on, on the screen, um, but sometimes seeing is believing. Um, so we will be scheduling um, open houses at some of our facilities um, and inviting the public to come in and take a look at, at some of these things and, and see for yourself. Um, we'd be happy to answer any of your questions during that process. Um, and then we're looking at um, several firms to help us pr provide some quotes for us to con conduct a space needs assessment. As mentioned, this is taking a look at our facilities uh, identifying what kind of spaces we, we really could use um, and how much space we need to meet our, our mission and vision um, and, and creating a footprint um, for a size need. So we can take a look at, can we fit these on our existing facilities? Can we consolidate our facilities? Uh, how can we manage to provide our services more efficiently? Um, through these facilities. So, and it may be, as mentioned, taking, you know, renovating some of our existing facilities. Can we 
um, or or building something new on a on on an existing property. But the but these are all questions that we'd be answering through this this process will help us be better able to answer the questions um, to find what is the best match for for our community. And we've been also exploring a number of financial opportunities um, to help make make this process happen. Um, we've reached out to the State Appropriations Committee um, to, for $250,000 to help with the space needs assessment and design process. Uh, we have reached out to Montgomery County through its Re recovery fund program, uh, which uh, was due at the end of April for $25 million to help with a municipal, a municipal complex. Uh, and $16.5 million for pools. Um, and we've also made significant requests under the Redevelopment wow. Assistant Capital Program from the state uh, for our facilities uh, throughout the years. Um, and then our, uh, finally uh, setting up another, another meeting time uh, so we can continue this discussion. Um, and then before we go on to discussion, Bob, do you have anything you would like to add? Just to add, thanks, Allison, for putting this together. Um, you know, there's significant dollars that the commissioners, uh, when uh, we brought this up about a little over a year ago, um, commissioners uh, gave direction to search out all dollars and available funding for this. Um, I know Commissioner Pransky has worked with the minority appropriations chair in the state uh, looking to secure $250,000 for this space planning and design work. Um, working with uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, who put a lot of time in talking to the state, federal, uh, and county representatives about what monies are available, put together significant dollars uh, to go towards these facilities, as Allison pointed out, $25 million in county recovery, sixteen point five, dollars uh, also towards the pools. And I believe, Mitch, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're well over $50 million, um, for our cap money to the state, um, way over it. Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's being conservative, but yes, it's way over. So um, this is something we came to the attention, looking to uh, collaborate and search out uh, all kinds of money that would be available to go towards these facilities. Um, I know some of the questions that I see in the chat box and that have been raised to me. You know, how how did this how was this allowed to get to this condition? Um, in my 20 months here trying to find that out, um, you know, talking to staff, talking to stakeholders, um, you know, this goes back, in my opinion, just my opinion, by 25, 30 years ago is where you see a lot of these issues starting to rise up. I think there was a failure in communications to advise the board as to conditions of, um, you know, what, what is happening uh, with buildings to take preventative steps but also take the hard look at and be open with the communities to say, Here, here's what's going on. Here's where our facilities are. And here are the challenges uh, moving forward. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's you know, mind boggling to see what these buildings have gone to. Um, there's no, I wish there was a quick fix because if there was a quick fix, the board would have voted for it, approved it and work would be getting done. But there's significant dollars here to correct this. And I don't think anybody wants to do a short-term fix or spend good money after bad, and then five years we're having the same conversation. So, um, you know, this is a global approach. This is something that the community has to be engaged with. Uh, you know, to let the board know and the staff, you know, what your thoughts are, where we're thinking, uh, but your frustration of how these buildings um, got to this point, um, it, it's. It is very frustrating to say the least. Um, there are numerous uh, environmental issues with these buildings, uh, flooding issues to the building, safety, life safety issues. Um, so these are the, a lot of concerns, um, especially too, as I know one question popped up, if we're working with the County uh, Recovery Act money. Uh, we submitted money last year, we submitted money again this year. Uh, and again, due to some very good lobbying um, efforts on behalf of you know, our commissioners uh, and taking point here as Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, Commissioner uh, Pransky, 
uh, you know, we're talking to the right folks here. It's just trying to pry that money loose. And especially with the county, if you read in the local, you know, uh, newspaper where it talked about the amount of submissions that have come in throughout the county that Montgomery County would be looking at. Uh, the dollars are huge, but we think we have a, uh, an amazing story here. We think we have a critical need. So in my humble opinion, I think we should go to the top of the list, but that's my opinion. Um, so we will you know, encourage you to contact our state representatives, our county commissioners, uh, you know, to have everyone put um, you know, Cheltenham in their front and center here, and especially the governor's office. He is the one that makes the decision on our cap. So uh, our hope is that you know, he will release monies to these uh, situations. And I think, Allison, if we are, um, do you want to talk about that poll that we're going to try try with? Sure. Um, while we're in the process of um, getting ready for a discussion, I'm going to stop my I screen. have a question if I can ask one. Um, if, if we can, just, just hold a lit. Um, if we can, before we get to the questions for the public, which is coming up Long very, time. very soon here in the next few moments. Allison, if you could just step through the poll and then we'll jump to questions, if that's okay. Sure. The, there's a short five, uh, question poll that I'm going to um, we'll try out here. Uh, hold on. Um, oh, no, I can't do this, unfortunately. I think I'm in the wrong device, it looks like. So we will skip that part. Um, so we can go straight to questions. And one of the things I know that came up is... Uh, I'm you know, just looking in the chat box there um, is, you know, current situations um, since last would be last fall. Uh, I know Commissioner Norris and Commissioner Rappaport, you know, were really looking hard for us to offer alternative sites. Uh, and we were looking at, and we're still continuing to look at alternative sites while these facilities are down, uh, trying to make those work for, work for the purposes, the intended purposes for the neighborhoods close proximity, so it's not a long travel to go somewhere else on a temporary basis. That's an ongoing thing that we're continuing to look at and we'll continue to review. Um, so uh, that has, has still been a priority also to simultaneous to all this work. So, I, if, so I think if we're all right, um, Allison, uh, one of the questions they're not sure where they could raise, see where they raise their hand or to start taking questions, we'll, we'll go to it. I have a question. Sure, go, go ahead, sir. First of all, Allison, what is your position in a township? I'm sorry, I don't know that. Sure, I am the assistant township manager. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just have a comment first before I ask my question. This report is shocking, absolutely shocking. My question is, do we have liability insurance? And if we do, how come? We do have liability insurance. And how come we do have liability insurance? If I were an insurer, I wouldn't insure this for anything. As a citizen of this community, I am shocked by the condition of these buildings and that they have been allowed to progress to this state. Sir, I don't think there's any any argument there. Um, it, it's it's mind-boggling to say the least. Uh, our insurance carrier has raised numerous concerns. We just changed uh, carriers, um, and they are looking into all our facilities. The previous insurer had um, uh, given reports to the township, and Allison, I'm not sure how when those reports began. Probably early 2000s. Would that be correct? Yeah, I, I don't know, but I would imagine since we uh, became insured through that company. And uh, those reports were advising the township as to the conditions of the facilities. Has and the insurance company made any suggestions or demands with regard to repairing some of these things? These are incredible liabilities, incredible uh, liabilities. Agreed, and they are working with us now. The new carrier is looking at these. Uh, they had been advising us to, as to some of the damages that uh, are to the building. So uh, we are working closely with them. They began January of this year. 
What is the allocation in the budget for repair for these things on an annual basis? You know, I, I could go back to just maintenance and repair. Uh, we're probably looking at somewhere, um, I'm gonna guess, they're really in the past trying to come through a plan. There's been plans for capital improvements. Um, so there has been some money uh, put aside for these, but uh, we're probably looking in the range anywhere around a half million dollars, which is, uh, is by a long shot inadequate to do what needs to be done. Absolutely. Thank you for your responses. Sure. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Darlene Melton. I'm sorry I don't have my camera on. Um, in the beginning of the presentation, and I'm sorry if I, I'm talking slow, um, it was mentioned that you're open to any type of suggestions. Everything and anything is being looked at. So this is my question. I see that you're going out after all government type of um, monies that we could get. What is the thought of the township um, accepting any outside non-governmental um, uh, uh, funds? If possible, that's one. And the second one is, and this is just a personal thing when it comes to money to me, we have two pools and yes, the summer is coming and everybody's going to be hot and bothered. And we haven't been able to get out. The virus, it keeps mutating. So my thought is that sometimes even when you do a household budget, you have to look at what is a priority. And enjoying the swimming pool might not be so much of a priority than taking some of that money and allotting it to someplace else. But I realized that the pools do have to be maintained or they will crack and they'll cost thousands of dollars to fix. Um, my only other comment as a longtime resident and also a person that has been to many meetings on advisory board sat where we were told that monies were given to do certain things. I'm actually, believe it or not, speechless. Darlene, just so you're aware, and to, to all residents, uh, both pools will be opening on time. Uh, I know that, and that's summer. what I'm saying. That I understand that they're opening the libraries are, aren't opening, or someone might be, but not all of them. Uh, we have nine miles. Um, my children are grown, but as a mother, okay, and even as a young child, when I lived in a community that I had to walk blocks and blocks just to get to the YMCA, I liked the fact that I lived where I knew that my children can go into that center and that Miss Slade watched those children and she made sure they were safe, okay? I wouldn't want one of my little children now with how society is to have to go nine miles just to go and play, okay? What I'm saying to you is, yes, the pools would be opening, but maybe they didn't need to be open, okay? Because maybe, if it's really true that germs gravitate to water, <laughs> we already got a problem out there in the world, okay? So again, my suggestion. And trust and believe that I'm going to look for some outside sources, okay? I don't know what nobody else is going to do, but I'm pretty sure there is some other person group that would would come to our aid it's no sense of trying to give the blame and you're right it should never have gotten to that to that and what i have always been saying and been saying it since somewhere in the 80s and 90s the money i thought was going to that one building should have been spread out at this point we all one community and we seem to all have the same problem and 
16.5 million for pools yeah. Yeah. Be Darlene, one thank million and something to each building that's all i need thank, thank you. you for your input darlene if i could just answer a couple of questions yes we are pursuing partnerships um we will never look away at that um some of the bigger stakeholders when we're looking at bigger dollars um, mm -hmm. there's some stake in it for them so we will continue to keep looking at that um, so that's always on the table for us. In okay. regards to the pools, the 16.5 million, that was a request for rebuilding and reconstruction of the two. It's not as though we have the 16.5, uh, we don't. That's what we've asked for. Um, but the pools do need significant work. Um, not sure how much longer we'll see the pools remain open because again, the appropriate dollars were not spent into the pool, the structure, the tank itself. Um, you know, we, we have reached the end on both pools. So um, hope is we'll get through this year um, with both pools. But again, they're also falling in the same condition of the rest of the facilities uh, that we have. Right. I, I understand. Well, and, and I understand sometimes just to fix the pool is, is I'm just saying if if you get 16 million and you have 16 build, buildings and maybe Maybe I just think of things very simply. If I have 16 bills and I get $1,600, everybody's going to get paid. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I think of the township budget as a household budget where everybody has to eat, everybody has to sleep, and things need to be done and maintained. We can't sit back now and say, well, it wasn't done and yes we know it's a band-aid and everybody always knew that you can't put a band-aid on a sore unless you try to heal the sore so at this point we're at the heal the sore point and that's all my opinion is about when we get money now how we should allocate it because okay. all of us in every single part of Sheltonham needs that allocation now Thank as you. for this library over here I, I'm still trying to figure out how you want to separate the community center from the library because our library is in the community center. <laughs> I have no clue. Thanks, darling. I think we all need prayer. Uh, Sarah Covell, you have a question? I have a question. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Allison, for all the work. Um, I know we reviewed all this several months ago. So I'm following up on the question that I requested last time. So financially from whether it's a, a realtor or a real estate, financially, how much each property is worth, what it's zoned for, what we could sell it for, um, could give us a financial basis of what we could get for the land of all these spaces and then follow up with which i think you have the numbers already how much space is on the township property land on old jerk road what we could build there and what other spaces um for instance like i, I i'm sure you're thinking of the admin building um or any other spaces out there um so i, I feel like if we had a spreadsheet and we knew, like for example, like I just mentioned, Roland Community Center, how much land, how much it's worth, what it could be zoned for, could give us a good financial basis on um, what we could use that money for. But Sarah, um, that's kind of one of our, under our, our next steps, we didn't specifically call that out, um, but under exploration of our financial options, uh, we will be looking at these very questions. What, what, um, you know? So we have the, the whole picture when we make this decision. Um, what, what is, what is our land worth? Um, if we cannot fit these uses that we want on the spaces that we have, so, so we can take that all into consideration. And I, th I think Sarah, to your point, and I know Henry's on this meeting. Henry, thanks for being here. Uh, Henry has. Uh, late this afternoon done a analysis as to the zoning of each of the parcels that we have 
Henry, I don't know if you, if you have a moment, you just want to, if you have it, if you just want to touch base on the properties. But one thing I, I want to say is that before I know rumors have started that we've sold properties or anything else, I don't think the township has even had a conversation about selling any properties so that, you know, and I, I even think some of the, some of the properties, especially in some of the neighborhoods, uh, you know, if things were uh, decided to relocate or that those properties would still remain township properties uh, and would be repurposed. Um, so. Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe the township can afford to do that. Right. That money is necessary so we can have a state of the art, you know, state of the art facility. Henry, do you want to just step through it real quick if you got it? Yeah, sh yeah sure. We do have, we did an analysis on, on uh, 12 properties in the township. The majority of the properties in the township are located in the residential district uh, or districts. And, um, you know, they range from two acres to over um, uh, 60, 60 acres for some. Uh, again, there's a lot of issues with some of these parcels, specifically the fact that some of them are in the floodplain, so there may be issues or challenges uh, with developing these parcels. Others uh, are associated with larger parcels with multiple function uses. Uh, but again, we've done the analysis. Again, it's gonna be an issue of trying to establish what the valuation is of, of some of these uh, parcels slash structures uh, as part of the process. Henry, is that something we could uh, get out to the board and then also post to the township so people, you know, if residents could see all this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I have a... Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Brown. Um, I'm a 38-year resident of Lamont. And um, when we first found out about the Lamont Community Center, I was floored because a lot of the residents didn't get any information about the building being in such bad shape because of course you know it was a pandemic so no one was really questioning you know a lot of things back then but as we went around because it was several of us that went around uh with petitions and dan norris will tell you that uh me martha woods and uh, darlene and most residents that we did speak with they didn't even know that the center had been closed so, you know, that was like poor communication. I don't know who dropped the ball on that one, but, you know, in the future, the, you know, the residents should be notified. The community needs to be notified about what's going on in the township. I mean, people were floored. It was even a couple people that registered their children for camp and it's no camp. So where did that money go? You know, so, you know, the lack of communication, it should be better communication so the residents should know what's going on in the township. And I just, you know, I went uh, and saw the condition of it and I, I, I was speechless myself. So I'm hoping uh, prayers go somewhere and something is done because we would hate to lose that center, you know, after all these years. And another question, uh, something, a question I wanted to ask is the Lamont Center considered historic on the books? Yes. 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 Okay. Jerry, just to your point there, I'll take responsibility for the communication breakdown. That's on me. Uh, I got here 20 months ago and seeing the conditions, I was just as shocked as you were, uh, but I do take responsibility uh, for that. So I apologize to you and all the residents for not getting the specific terms out to everyone to let everyone know why and the conditions and what was going on. So that sits with me and I apologize. Don't for that. blame yourself for everything because I heard more from you in the last week, you know, and I really appreciate your concern. And um, Brad Pansky did uh, talk to me, he called me. I had missed his call, but I was able to speak with him. But, you know, I'm just hoping some miracle or something happens, grants, I don't know what, something to, to save that building. And Bob, if I could for half a second. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. Because I don't want to start a lot of cross conversations. Um, Jerry, I see Martha's there um, yeah. also, and I heard Darlene before. Um, this is not a problem that just surprised us. Um, I can personally tell you that I had stuff in front of prior boards 
um, from early in the 2000s. They didn't either feel that the, the revenue was there to support it or they didn't want to raise taxes or whatever reason they didn't move on it. This board, since I've been on it at least, has taken, and I'm not claiming credit for that, I just my own personal experience, has taken more action to fix more things in this township than I saw in all the years I lived here and I grew up in this township. Um, they've been very proactive. The administration is being very proactive. You've probably all noticed that we had a lot of change in personnel and that's because we're trying to correct the mistakes of the past. This is a complicated, complicated issue. It's not just what we'd like, it's what we have, what we can afford, what the residents can tolerate financially. And we have to put all of that into one big pot and then say, okay, given all this, what can we do? So yes, we need to know what assets we have and what they're worth and what they could get us. But we're starting with the space requirements as was shown in the presentation because we have to see exactly, given what we have, and what we'd like to see, what do we need? And then get a universe of dollars of what might that cost us? Then we back up to the other stuff and see what we have to use and see what we can acquire from. So yes, you're going to hear a lot of information tonight. Some of it will be very frustrating. Trust me, there are seven people who sit at the board table who are just as frustrated, if not more so, than you are because we have to figure out when we get this all solved, how's it going to get paid for? How are we going to deal with it? Not everybody will be happy. I promise you that. A lot of people will. Somebody will complain about something. It's natural. It's normal. Anytime there's change, somebody's not going to like it. But we're going to do the best we can. We're going to present it to everybody. We're going to have conversations about it. And hopefully, at the end of the process, which will be quicker than longer, it'll get resolved. I've said my piece, so I keep quiet. Uh, I could just, yeah. uh, so could I was gonna say, uh, if I might add to to Commissioner France, yeah, what Commissioner Francie has said uh, over the years, previous boards have spent a lot of time looking at facilities, um, things that files have moved around, so I can't as easily locate them as I used to be able to. But there are stacks of studies uh, and analyses that have been done on the facilities. But what I can say is each one was found lacking in some way or another, and, and each board did not pull the plug to move forward with them. Um, and in and, and looking at them, I, I agree that they are because I think they were looking at individual problems. Um, so I, I think one of the big changes about this initiative really is looking holistically at the entire system of buildings. And I think this is a really kind, good time to do that so that when you make a change, you're making a change that benefits the entire community, not just spending a lot of money to fix one little problem and still have lots of little problems or even big problems throughout the township. So, so that's why we're really spending a lot of time to look at all of the issues right now and try and figure out the best solution for the community as a whole. If I could add to what Commissioner Pransky said, um, for those that don't know me, I'm Ken Holland, I'm the head of the ambulance and lifelong resident and been an employee of the township since 1978, which makes me old. And um, I can tell you that this board and this manager are um, being very receptive to all of our concerns. And I think Allison said it in her talk. Um, when we moved into the EMS building in 1982, it, it was a condemned building and it was uncondemned for us to move in with nothing being done. So um, listening to everyone's concerns, we as staff agree with you 100%, but please understand that this board um, is listening to us. This manager is listening to us. We're really making some progress. So. Um, it is a big change for us as staff, and we appreciate it. So um, thank you. Okay, well, um, I know Edie has been uh, waiting. I think you're next in line for a comment. Thank you. I agree 100% that we should be looking forward. Um, I also agree that we need to do the best solution for the township and that there are always going to be money concerns, whether the money is rolling in or the money is tight. Money is always an issue. Um, I'm disappointed that 
um, there hasn't been much movement with the facilities committee and that it was um, formed back in the fall. And we had one meeting and since then we've had no meetings. I know that the people on the committee would have a lot of input uh, about a lot of the concerns that were uh, brought up tonight. Um, I also, I, I also agree we need the best solution for the township, but we should not be looking at uh, how much buildings cost or how much properties cost until we decide what we need for our community. People move to Cheltenham because of who we are and what we have. And that's the first thing that we should be looking at is what do we want? And then after what do we want, then what can we, what can we afford? Um, rather than saying, okay, this is, this is what we can afford, this is what we want. I know firsthand, this is not the first time that I, I've, I, I've heard about this program, that, about the program. I've toured some of the facilities. I've seen how they have been left to, left to decay. I realize how big the problem is. But if we're going to be attacking this problem, we should be attacking it from the viewpoint of who, are, who we want to be as a community what we want to give to our residents and then how can we do that we can't do it all at once that's for sure but we should have a, our goal should be that uh what the what we need for the community what the community wants what we need to be and then work from there i also understand that there are safety issues and i've said before that our employees deserve to work in safe and clean and 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 the kind of facilities that that anybody would want want to work in. I'm not dismissing that. I'm just saying that I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse, that we need to define what we want and then then go and, and who we want to be and the services that we want to have for our citizens and where those those services should be and then decide what the facility should be for that. And we also need to uh, think about our historic heritage. We, we've been around since the 1600s. And I would hate to see some of those historic buildings fall by the wayside or be torn down. It, um, and I think that they can, they can be saved with some creative thinking. And I hope that the, uh, the committee uh, the, the committee of people who were appointed in the fall will be called together to talk about the, the ideas that they have and to use us to get to the community to find out what the community wants. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. England? Try that without mute. Thank you, Allison and Bob, for the presentation. I dropped, I have two questions. I dropped the first one into the chat, and that is that we were informed last September of the closing of these two community centers, and it was said that the community centers would reopen in the spring. What is the, what's the timeline? What is the plan or the thinking in terms of reopening Roland and Lamar community centers? I think as of right now, the libraries are what we're looking to get open. The community centers as they go because of the deteriorating conditions um, right now are not going to open. Um, so, but we are still looking at that. Um, I know John Pipsney, we just retained John here as our new uh, Parks and Recreation Director which uh, John, you've been here for a week already. I know you've been out to tour all the sites there. Um, so he is going to look at you know these facilities and see what we can do, what we can't do. But we've got some major issues with you know the building structures itself. Uh, so it's something we're going to continue to look at. But one of the things we wanted to make sure we got open were the two libraries. Thank you. And then the second question is: We used to have a robust summer program, Parks and Rec. Uh, actually, I guess it was year round. Our daughter 15 years ago would take different classes at Lamont. 
what's going to happen to the programming or is there programming that would have been offered in these two neighborhood community centers? I don't think there were any plans for those programs this year, uh, just given the conditions of the two facilities. Uh, but I know John is looking at all of these programs and the intent is long term is to reestablish all these programs because of the history and the benefit it had to so many uh, of the neighborhoods and the residents. Okay, I just want to, I want to say, I, I understand when you're dealing with uh, facilities that have not been maintained. I spent eight years on the Cheltenham School Board, and we have a couple of buildings in this community that probably are way beyond the expected life, the, the life expectancy without major investment in the buildings. Um, but we had to find a way to keep those open. We had to keep Elkins Park School open. We had to draw down and invest in a boiler. And I've heard it said, people don't want to invest in failing buildings or throw good money at bad. But sometimes you have to, we had to keep that building open. And I look at these community centers, they may not be school buildings, but what they have provided what they can provide to the neighborhoods is very important for the people who live near them. And it's, it's just sad to, to see uh, where we are right now with these facilities closed. And I, I completely get uh, what you all are facing. I, I have faced it, but it, it's very sad and disturbing that, uh, that that's what we're doing. We're just closing facilities um, particularly in two neighborhoods that I live in Elkins Park. People here could hop in their car and drive to Glenside if they needed a library or community center. I'm not certain that everybody who lives in the Village or Rowland has that ability to be able to cruise over to Glenside or Elkins Park. So um, it, it's unfortunate. Thank you. Sure. I, I wish we had the same tax base as the school district because I think we'd be in a lot better position. But you know, that's are you raising are you raising revenue at a level to be able to continue to move forward with the township? Because these aren't the only things that people are talking about. Right. Well, I think we're looking. I know we've raised fees um, to look to address a number of these situations. But again, you can only go to the taxpayers so many times. Um, and again, when we receive only a small portion of the dollar that comes from real estate tax, you know, it's hard to stay up on a lot of these issues and uh, especially to be caught, catch up on. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's a concern, um, at least in my, my opinion on those. Is it some way that the community can be notified of some of these things that are going on now with the Lamont Center? So it won't be any more surprises? Yeah, I'm hearing more and more, you know, about getting the word out. And this may be something that um, we'll consider actually doing, doing a mailing to every home to give a condition update, and a status update. Um, we'll look for someone to help sponsor that, um, you know, uh, notification as well, uh, and possibly the township look to put it together um, because uh, you're, everyone's absolutely correct. Trying to get the information to everyone's house at times is tough because if you don't go to the website, you don't have social media, it's kind of hard to get to know that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you try to get a mailing out, but people look at it as though it's shuffled in with all the other junk mail that you get from, you know, um, Different, different things that come constantly in the mail. So trying to get that information out, we'll see what kind of creative ways we can do to get the information out to everybody in the community and to engage them in the process. Hello, may I interject and piggyback on that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is Darlene again. Um, a while back and before you came um, as our township manager, um, we knew that there were some budget issues and I was actually asked if to assist in that, in that process, because it was known that I had a Chelsea Chats, which is not a mail, it's not a newspaper, but what it is, is an email. And I have 
email addresses of people in the community, and there's some outside the community. Um, hi, Brad, I know that you're aware of that. So if you hear of something, just send me a Chelsea chat and I, I'll make sure that I get it out to those people. It might not be all of the community, but um, you tell one, somebody else will tell somebody else, okay? So. That's good. I'll let Lauren's on here as our public information officer, so I'll make sure Lauren gets you the information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Leah. Yes, thank you. Um, a few questions slash comments. Um, one goes to uh, what uh, Bob, you just shared about, oh, communicating with the communities. And I'm wondering how much, and maybe this is happening and I just am not on the right list, but how much we're using existing email lists that we have. Um, you know, every library, I'm sure, you know, I get mailings from the library. So hopefully those, we can find a way to work together to communicate with those that might have signed up for classes at Lamont or Roland in the past, you know, those like surely those lists exist because when you sign up for the pools, the, you know, programs, et cetera, you're giving that information. Um, and that to me ties right into like uh, going to the question that Bill asked, talking about those programs in the community centers. My kids have also taken some of them were huge pool users and swim team and swim lessons and swim lessons haven't happened in two years. And I'm just thinking of, you know, the hundreds of kids that aren't getting, you know, that basic life skill at a really affordable cost. So hopefully those are back this summer, but the other programs, I am worried that while they do have that super long history and love in the community, that at this point, two years from COVID, now we're adding a third year for infrastructure. Um, I mean, and it's kind of, there's no end date in sight. I mean, this could be, if we're waiting for a new building to be built or new buildings, then I mean, is this a four or five, six, like, you know, our kids not, you know, I know that they tried to have some dance classes this year working, you know, with the school buildings and things like that. But I mean, there were at some, at one point there was an endless stream of programs and activities and some better attended than others. They can always be improved. You find what's, you know, the in thing that year, but I'm just worried that, you know, already now at two years and we're looking at at least another year that uh, there is no momentum at that point. And the new po folks that live here now, they're not coming to the township to look for their programming because they've already found it somewhere else. So we're kind of losing a whole generation, I think, of people with younger elementary school age kids. Those, I hope, I don't know if the camps are happening that are mostly outdoors or not. I didn't hear that addressed. Um, so anyway, I just, it's kind of heartbreaking for me to think about all of those. And while uh, I understand the real issue of the, the finances to fix the buildings uh, quickly, that's not possible. Um, it just kind of feels like it's nothing is the answer right now. Um, and I just wanted to add one more voice to uh, not at this point anyway, being in favor of a centralized unit for all buildings. I'm just thinking about the way our community lives and works and how everyone has their close library. And again, it's easy for me to run over to another library and I can walk to one. Not everyone can do that. And I think we're really there's a lot of a lot of kids, especially, and um, all kinds of people that are just really losing out by not having uh, these buildings and these libraries and these other programs accessible accessible to them. John, you want to talk about some of the things you've seen in your week of being here and where you see things going? Uh, sure. I mean, I, you know, I kind of came in here and my head was spinning after the first 24 hours looking at the conditions of these facilities. Uh, Kelly actually took me on a tour over by Lamont. Um, I was there for about 15 minutes and I ended up coughing for about two hours because of the holes in there. It kind of affected me. So, you know, there's a lot of issues um, and really the facilities that we have aren't really conducive to some good recreation programming just due to the lack of sizes. Um, you know, Allison mentioned about the gym and that, and that's, that's very difficult to even conduct a basketball game in those gyms. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot that we've got to talk about um, and see where we can move in the future. Yeah, if I could just really quick, since John, you answered, thank you so much and welcome uh, to, to this. Um, it's just, we do, what we also have uh, is lots of amazing outdoor facilities. And so uh, in the interim, hopefully there are ways to come up with, you know, we have tennis courts and basketball courts and amazing playgrounds and open spaces. So, you know, I guess while we have good weather, hopefully we can, you know, be creative as we can. 
Um, hello, it's me, Darlene, again. Hi, welcome. Um, this might be about the fifth time I heard somebody say that the center, Lamont Center, is not conducive to do basketball. And I'm going to say this. We had a basketball court. Outside, it was removed. We had a basketball court in John Russell Park, which I can look at. They removed it. My child, my youngest child, is 40-some. The oldest one played in that center. Now, I don't think that the ceiling got any shorter or taller, but the children didn't complain about playing basketball in there. Matter of fact, there was one that was so good he could have got a scholarship. It's just a challenge. But to focus that the ceiling is so low because the kids can't play basketball, that's not the only thing the children can do. And if everybody was concerned that they can't play a particular sport, they shouldn't have took away what they had. They could have kept the basketball courts and then made that building conducive for what else is being used for, the meetings, uh, the, the, the camp things, the, the seniors that have their meetings, okay? So I'm sorry to sound a little, uh, but I'm tired of hearing about the basketball courts. That is so minute considering that if somebody would have fixed a roof, because everybody seems to know that water goes down. You have a problem in your basement because your roof is messed up and or your foundation is messed up. Now, I'm, I'm my dog, he's crying. So now we're at this point and all we can talk about is, 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 is basketball courts, no. We need buildings and we need them fixed. And we need to keep the historical character of the entire community, whether it's deemed historical or it's not. Now I graduated from a Sheltonham school, not Sheltonham, but in the district. And just because I moved out and came back, I was able to come back in this area. And again, everybody likes the area for one reason or another but we need to communicate with each other, okay? Because I'm still trying to confuse of how this committee started and why, why certain areas weren't told, why certain boards wasn't told, okay? And we just need to get a little bit more communication and try to figure something out. Hey, darling, okay. thank you. We're gonna to go to some people who haven't had a question. I, I understand, I'm gonna mute myself again. Thanks. Hi, my name is Sarah Harris and I don't know if I'm allowed to speak now. Or if anyone can hear me. Uh, go go ahead and David, I'll get to you next. Okay, well, I'm, I'm very concerned because, uh, and I thank everyone that is trying to do their best or has looked into this, but I think there's a little more that we can do because this sounds like a repeat of the history of areas in Philadelphia where they closed down the rec centers. And then you see more and more crime in those communities. And that's one thing we, don't, we do not want to happen in Sheltonham. We do not want the crime to increase. But when you take away activities from the young people, and also there are seniors that are dealing with a lot of issues in Lamont, I'm speaking for Lamont and Roland, but I went to Lamont Community Center and uh, I enjoyed it. And we're, there were a lot of activities there for the seniors. And also I saw a lot of activities for the young people, the libraries, for those that didn't have computers, they would go there to do their homework. And there were a lot of activities for the young people and especially in the summer. So it's shame on us. It really is. It's shame on us in Sheltonham that we throw up our hands and say, there's nothing we can do or that you're doing all that you can do. Now I'm speaking to someone in um, Madeline Dean's office and they're gonna to try to help us and um, I think maybe uh, we might have to do a petition to see what can be done because something has to be done. We can't just say we're doing all we can, there's no money or the buildings are falling apart, but something must be done to keep our community safe. If you don't provide something for these young people, then God help us. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, David Cohen. Yes, thank you. Um, two, two issues. I, I'm glad there's been a, somewhat of an ass assessment done. 
about the condition of the township buildings, and that's a good first step. And next step, several next steps I recommend or suggest would be looking at what are the viable uses for the current township buildings, both by the township and or is there a market for those buildings. Other steps briefly are doing somewhat of a charrette, maybe on a thematic level, looking at the services, the admin for the township, looking at the community service aspect, the recreation aspect, the historic aspects, and doing some visioning and maybe trying to see if there's some type of consensus with the township taking the lead with community input in terms of what are aspects that the township and the community wants in those buildings. And also trying to look at forward as opposed to less looking backwards, which seems to be a large focus from the community in general in really every community. The last part is to look at what are the needs for the township in different ways, again, with those areas, with the services including, and also admin, historic and also recreation as well. And then also what are the wants? And to try to really determine, at least at a high level, what are some of the areas and themes that the township wants to, to begin to move towards a plan. Ideally, there'd be resources to hire professionals to do this and hire real estate firms to do this for a living and consultants, where the money is probably not there. But to begin to try to, in relatively short order, because the building's getting worse and worse condition every day and certainly every year, to try to, again, move forward in some sort of structured way. Thank you. Thanks, David. Hey, Julia. Uh, Julian. Oh, hi. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Juliana. Um, I'm on the facilities committee. And um, like Edie, I, I really hope that we will meet more frequently since I haven't heard anything since before the holidays um, from the committee email and in terms of meeting. Um, one thing I'm surprised hearing about is a mold issue in Lamont and about like somebody having a coughing fit because uh, I'm highly allergic to mold and I toured uh, Roland and Lamont before the holidays and uh, granted we were all wearing masks but you know not not enough to really protect you from mold um, and I didn't have any type of problem so that really makes me think that having the heat turned off all winter may have only made things a lot worse um, in those buildings um, so that's a concern you know if we're doing this shutdown and then reopen thing that could be making breathing conditions much worse with the uh, moisture um, and then lastly, I just wanted to say that I, I hear a lot of residents um, expressing their desire to be able to walk to their community centers. Um, and I, I understand that um, I can see things from both sides, like a, a centralized location that could be really nice and state of the art is really appealing. Um, but also that walkability is as well. Um, I live over in Glenside and to be honest, uh, and I grew up in Wincote, there was no walkable community center. There, there never was one over here on the west side. Um, we had Glenside Hall, but programming wasn't done there for the kids. So if we are going to think about that smaller walkability thing, um, continuing for those other neighborhoods, maybe we could really think about having something over here that kids in Glenside could walk to because, uh, you know, we do have the library and that's good, but there isn't like an actual community uh, meeting place for them. Glenside Hall was never really used that way. Um, and from what I understand with the flooding issue there, that doesn't sound like a good, you know, health situation either. So, um, okay, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. I know one of the things that from, you know, you've got Irv, you got Matt, you got Baron, they've been very much involved with this. Matt, I know that that, that he's been engaged, uh, speaks to me on a regular basis, you know, concerns from his residents. Irv, the same thing. Irv, Irv has the same concerns with, you know, Roland and the community center. And they, you know, everyone is engaged in this. Uh, and it was upset and wants to see things move quickly and try to come to some resolution on this. So you've got a board that's active here, that's engaged. The same thing with staff, you know, nobody enjoys this um, at all. And it's how we continue to, to move forward and get going. 
Uh, and really, uh, to David Cohen's point, you know, the past is the past. Now it's time for us to move on and look at the future and look to what types of resolutions we can come up and start moving on with this. Allison, any other questions coming in? I don't see anyone. Um, anyone have any last questions or concerns or things you'd like us to consider? Uh, Sarah. I, I just feel like it's important that we have a timeline. Um, I, you know, what's, what's our next step, our goals in whatever it is, two months, three months, six months, I mean, I even though I, I appreciate all the work that you've done, this is the same presentation I heard in in like December. So I I just feel like we wasted already, you know, four months of moving forward. And again, I'm not trying to diminish or minimize the work because you guys do an incredible amount of work, and um, I know there's a lot of work behind the scenes. So I, I'm not trying to diminish that at all or minimize it. Um, but but we got to have some goals and a timeline um, so that we can see there's an end to this. Um, so, you know, smaller goals, larger goals, um, and, and whatever it takes. I'm not a, uh, you know, meeting organizer type person, but uh, there's got to be some more structure to this because it, it has to be going, it has to be more of the future and what's what's going to happen. No, that's a good, good point, Sarah. Um, you know, the delay between meetings is the board uh, getting their arms wrapped around the magnitude of this, of what we're looking at dollar wise. Uh, this, this is not a million dollar, $2 million dollar fix that we could do the magnitude of this um, at the direction of the board. That's why we set this meeting up uh, tonight to give an update to the photos. Uh, it's not, these are not the same photos. These are new photos that uh, Lauren and Allison put together uh, of the updated conditions of the buildings. Um, the next step, uh, we are getting final proposals for the firms to do the planning uh, as well as looking at all these facilities. Uh, our hope is that we will have the final proposals in by uh, the end of this week, early next week, at which time we can present those to the board. And uh, my recommendation to the board would be is to interview these firms to, to get the feeling so that it, in the idea of what each firm's gonna lay out and especially to meet, meet a lot of the goals and objectives that we're spoken to tonight about the engagement, uh, establishing an opportunity to be able to, you know, set timeline, timelines that we can all follow. Uh, because again, this can't, this can't wait, this can't go, you know, a year at a time for each step. It's gonna have to move much quicker. Um, so that's what we're looking at recommending to the board is getting these proposals to, to the board for them to review. Uh, and uh, it would be my understanding that these would be public meetings in which the board would interview these firms. And then again, there could be questions that come from the public. Uh, what we would like to do in the meantime is uh, schedule a time for everyone who would like to walk through the current facilities uh, to take you through those facilities as well as have some conversations with staff. Alan Brown is on this call tonight. Alan has been a miracle worker. He is our superintendent of facilities and has been doing an outstanding job just to try to hold them all together with as much glue and uh, bubble gum that he uh, can uh, round up. Um, so that would be the intention there. Um, we would like to get another meeting uh, in one month and we will send out um, dates uh, by the end of the week of what we would be looking for with that. Um, so that would be kind of a looking forward because not having that particular firm on board that's going to be doing the planning and is what Commissioner Norris spoke about, you know, at looking at current facilities, what can be done uh, to maintain that presence in the neighborhood, but also look at, you know, what the space requirements or what the uh, 
um, needs of the community, the wants of the community, uh, you know, what the vision is uh, for these areas and uh, how we move forward. Do we, okay, so first of all, I, I really feel that you guys have a lot of work on your shoulders to do and taking time out to tour the facilities should right. not be going on and on and on. Yeah. Maybe offer one more time and then that's it because these buildings aren't safe. You can see from the photos what's going on. And to take time out of the supervisor who's in charge of the facilities is not fair to him because he has a workload as well. Um, so in defense of, of you guys, I feel offer one more time and enough is enough. Yeah, that, I mean, that... you can see by the photos. I've been in the buildings for my kids being in the different, you know, facilities and programs over the last 20 years. I, I, I think enough is enough. Second That's of all, good, I do feel that, <laughs> I do feel that we should be touring the other township buildings. I mean, like Springfield Township, see what they just built. Let's go see what, um, Upper Dublin just built in their, I think their new library. I mean, I think it would be advantageous to see what's out there and what other townships are doing um, because there's ideas and things that we probably would never ever think of unless we, we see those. Um, so that would be, I think, more suitable to do. Um, I'm not sure what, what's your opinion on that? We, we, we will, Bob, schedule, can I, we will Bob, can schedule I jump those as well too. Yeah, um, Bob, can I, can I jump Irv, in here? Irv, go ahead. Yeah, Sarah, I, first of all, Sarah, thanks again for getting on here. I 100% agree with you. I don't see the purpose of another visit to these buildings. Um, both meetings we had, we showed, we showed the horror pictures. The pictures don't lie. Um, you're going, you're going to walk through and see the same thing that you saw in the, in the photos. The photos are going to be on the website. So if you want to take a look at them, you, you've seen what the community center looked like before. You've seen the before pictures and you've seen the after. So let's not waste Alan's time doing that. I, I completely agree with you with that, Sarah. Now, as for the other community centers, we don't need to go there. You can go on their website. You can see it. You can see pictures of Springfield. Okay and see all the fancy stuff that they got. You know, we don't need to have an open house with them at, at all, I, you know, because that, that information is available right online. But Sarah, I agree with you 100%. I don't think that we need to do another, um, have another field trip <laughs> to Lamont and, and Roland. And, hey, plus and, it's not safe. It's just not yeah, safe. Not safe. Yeah. Now, I, I do want to ask Bob one question. Do we know when, I know there was a cold, it was a cold spring colder than what normal. Um, any ideas on when those libraries will be open, opening if they haven't already? Alan, any idea on those? Because, you know, the weather's getting warmer now. Sure. So good evening, everyone. So the libraries are, the buildings are able to, to have the libraries back in them. Uh, that's pretty much up to the library when they want to open up to the public. But the buildings are able to, um, that the staff is able to come back in the building that any day. The library staff is actually back in the building, getting the building, getting their libraries prepped for the public. But uh, as, again, that's that's up to the library board to, when they'll actually open. Okay. Yeah, Mary Kay is on here. I don't want to put her on the spot, but perhaps I just did, uh, <laughs> unless, she, unless she just wishes to uh, ignore. <laughs> um, so Mary, do you have any input on, on a date? I, I do not have a date. Um, I can tell you that the buildings are running between 58 and 61 degrees inside. We are hoping to get them up to about the mid 60s before we ask our staff to be in there on a permanent basis. Um, we do, we have moved our computers back in and the materials that we had stored over at Glenside Hall have moved back in. Um, we're just waiting for the indoor temperatures to be a little more comfortable working conditions um, before we ask the staff to be back in there permanently. Thank you, makes sense. Thanks, Mary Kay. 
Um, excuse me. Hi, this is Darlene again. Sarah and Irving. Let me just say this out to you. I understand if you do not want to go back into rolling to another tour. From the pictures, Roland looks worse than Lamont. I will also agree that we saw pictures today of the modern buildings and facilities that other communities have. We can always take little bits and pieces from that. However, I disagree that we should not have another tour of Lamont. The reason being is because that September meeting that not only did the community didn't know, the Lamont Bahar didn't know. Please do not tell me again that there was public because I heard that at another meeting and that nobody from Lamont showed up in the September meeting. Let me say this, the citizens of Lamont, I found, have always been concerned if they know. They can't come to a meeting, they can't be concerned, they can't help you or help themselves if you're, you don't know. So on that basis, I was in the community center, thank you um, for showing, the one room that we were shown, yes, it, it's bad. But from the pictures I've seen today, Lamont Center is not as bad as Roland. And to the gentleman that has the allergy of mold, I do too. Um, I, I'm asthmatic to the point if I go into a room and the temperature change. I didn't have that problem going into Lamont. And that was just this week. I don't know when those pictures for the presentation was done. So again, my suggestion just for the citizens of that particular area to have another, if they don't show, they don't show. We can't, we can't, we can't, okay. you know, don't, make them come. But mean, to say you. not to do it, mm -mm. you're R welcome, Rhonda, Dave. Thanks. Rhonda, you're next. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no, I was just reiterating what Sarah said that I don't, I don't think that going through those buildings again, A, is safe and B, that it's really going to make a significant difference um, or impact on the community. I mean, we posted pictures all over Facebook and social media where we could. Um, so I guess that was, you know, that was my point, actually. Rhonda, excuse me, but the township charter does not say to put on Facebook. The township charter says that you're supposed to mail. Now, I know we're in a technology uh, a society, but we do have some rules and regulations that we can at least attempt to try. And I don't even know how this committee even started, but I can tell you the people on Sycamore had no clue what's going on. And the township charter says that anything that occurs is supposed to be a 500 distance from their current. So, Thank you for putting on Facebook, and I'm not on Facebook, and a lot of the people aren't. Um, again, okay. I'm willing if I know, I'll pass the word around, but okay. we need to know. Uh, can I can I interrupt one more qu quick thing? Yes, because, uh, because we tried this too, really. I mean, the township did, and many of us tried to put it out on the um, the planning, you know, the comprehensive plan. Um, and it went out, I believe, in the calendar and the newsletter. And we only got like 1,300 responses. So, I mean, that's something communication continues to be something we need to address. And how do we motivate citizens to get involved, even, you know, like with surveys? Because I believe we had them at, Mary Kay can answer that, but um, I thought we had them at the libraries also. The libraries and been closed, remember? The libraries were closed before they opened back up. So no, no, but even the know. ones, even the ones that were open, there there was very little response. Okay. Yes, because we're, I we're live gonna, in the mind. I don't go all the way over to the other side half the we're time. Go, we're going to move along to <laughs> Teresa. We're moving along. We're moving. We're moving along. Teresa, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I I think that we really should honor Darlene, Miss Darlene's uh, request. Uh, she, she knows her community best and 
she and 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 Jerry Brown, they they both have they're, they're pillars in the community. If they feel that the the citizens of Lamont want to see what's going on and participate, I think we should give that one more chance to happen and honor the request. You don't have to do it for all the buildings, but if they're speaking on behalf of the M Lamont community, I think we need to do that. Okay. Um, and and I, uh, I'm just responding to that, but I, I had a question and I did share this with um, Ms. Jerry and Ms. Darlene. Uh, has there been any requests made, and I, I'm not following the funding or I don't know too much of the detail of how this is going to be afforded, but has the private sector been uh, approached at all? Uh, is this is this all internal funding from the township or are there? The, the, the funding is an open question at this point. So we don't okay. know whether it's going to be state so, or, or internal, uh, but as was stated earlier, private partnerships, uh, private uh, right. partnerships will be considered. Okay, so I would just like to add this, that I spoke with a woman from Washington DC area and uh, she works on some, her and her husband work on large projects and they're African American uh, communities. And she said that, um, she mentioned that at the national level, there are lists of people who want to help out and preserve um, national uh, spots. Lamont's a national treasure. It's not just our treasure, it's a national treasure. And I think that we can make some effort to move forward to look for some um, some big funding for this. You know, go to Smithsonian or go to some, uh, have some inroad to, uh, and, and, and what makes me think this as well, I've seen Stedman in the neighborhood years ago in Lamont across the street. Stedman is, is Oprah's partner. And I saw him pulling out of the back of the Elkins estate at one point because there was a request uh, from that development there to see if there was big funding uh, interested. I mean, there's so many people, um, you know, that could be approached that, that might want to help just particularly for Lamont. I mean, it's, I, I, again, I just feel there's, we need to honor their request and think a little bit out of the box here. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Florence? Yes, good evening. Um, I'd, I'd also uh, like to, um, you know, keep that open that there'll be another tour, you know, not only for the citizens of uh, the neighbors of uh, Lamont, but also some of us over here in the Western part of Wincote uh, because I certainly didn't know there was a tour. Um, so I'd like to be you know, included in that. The other thing, I just wanted to ask a question about these um, uh, requests for proposals for planning. Do you have a timeline as to when you want all the proposals in? And is each, is whatever companies that do um, uh, reply, will they be replying for all the facilities or are you accepting proposals from one facility from this company and two others from that company, how is that going to work? And what's the timeline? Bob, you're on mute. You're muted, Bob. Sorry about that. Um, the timeline is we want these proposals no later than Monday, and it is for the entire township. It is not specific to one location or another. This is looking at the township as a whole. You're saying this Monday coming? Monday this between? Monday coming, that's correct. There are, some okay. that, there are some that have been received, but the uh, final deadline will be Monday for everyone. Okay, and then after those uh, proposals are in, are in, you'll review them and then there'll be um, some information sharing yes, with well, the uh, township residents? That's correct. The plan would be to bring these uh, firms uh, to the board for interview uh, opportunities. Uh, so they completely and fully understand the scope of work, as well as we will post the proposals to the website so the public can be able to review these as well, and then participate uh, in those um, interview processes. Thank you. Sure.
Okay, uh, let me see this one. Uh, Florence? I'm sorry, did somebody call me? Oh, sorry, yes, you just, okay, sorry. Um, you're on two different. Uh, I think okay. perhaps, I'm not Sarah. sure if Sarah Harrison has another yes. question. Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sarah Harrison speaking. Okay, yes, thank you for this opportunity. Um, we are concerned, as I said, about um, the young people and having um, something open up for them. So there was a question about the schools. Since uh, we're not gonna have any buildings uh, that are gonna, Lamont is not gonna be prepared for uh, this summer, but what about using the school buildings uh, for a summer camp? Is that feasible? And no, also just... have we looked into, like I said, I'm uh, having conversations with people in uh, Congresswoman Madeline Dean's office to see if, if there's funds that they can provide for us. And um, do we know that the federal government does not have funds? Uh, that is something that uh, I know our commissioners have been reaching out to Madeline Dean's office and speaking about all available funding that is available. Now, the other question was about the schools so that the uh, young people would have something for this summer. Are there programs, is it possible, feasible to use some of the schools for camps or, or summer programs for them? And I know at Lamont, there were um, quite a few seniors. You know, we were meeting once a week and um, it was beneficial to the community. I'm from Wincote myself, but it, 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 I could almost walk to Lamont. So uh, is there something for the young people for the summer? Is it feasible for the schools to have some sort of summer program that could be fun, that could be part of the community? John, is that something that you'll be reaching out to the schools looking at? Yeah, I can definitely do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I also make a comment on that? Sure, and Commissioner Rappleton. Yeah, I'm, we will be meeting next week also in our liaison group with the school district. And uh, that needs to be on the agenda for them as well. Yeah, hope, hopefully John will reach out to them even before then and see what opportunities there are. And, and good evening, everybody. Uh, Brian Scriven, superintendent for Shellingham School District. So I've been here on here the entire night. Um, John, you know the process. Um, Tim Holman is on a call as well with facilities. Uh, there's an application process. Just reach out to Mr. Holman and we'll be able to uh, take a look at any proposals and help however needed based on available space. Fantastic. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Scriven. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Scriven. All right, I think, Dan, we're at the nine o'clock hour here. Um, <laughs> my suggestion would be that we will uh, post this information as soon as we can. I know this, will, this meeting will be posted as well as the presentation to the township's website. We'll also put out information as to a tour of the facilities with the date. Um, we will also then to get the information out in regards to the proposals and when those would be being presented to the board. Um, and then we will also look to set a date on the next facilities committee meeting. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank you to the staff and to the public for participating and to my fellow commissioners. Everyone have a uh, safe evening. Thank Good you very night. much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, have everyone. Safe Thank and safe evening. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Th Thank you very much. I feel some hope is, is, is in the wind. Thank you. Thank awesome. you, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.